Must be regional dialect. Good morning, travelers. My name is Milo Rossi, and welcome to day two of Dark Roots. Sunlight's not great this morning, but it's still picking up a bit of a charge, so may as well let it go. Down to like 65, 66% from last night, uh, from a full charge. So I'm gonna just keep trying to get as much power in it as possible. does get cold in the desert. Who would have thought? After yesterday, I did not expect to wake up here and need to put on layers, but here we are. Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Ooh, voice is still waking up. There's a cow watching me. Mmm. Still got my winter feet on. The sharp grass is not agreeing with me. Welcome to day two and the first official full day of Dark Roots. And I suppose, I, I don't really know if I'm gonna explain this at another point, so I'll do it now. And some of you may be thinking, Milo, Dark Roots, Dark Routes, which one is it? It really, it can be whichever one you want it to be. I come from uh, New England, and so uh, we pronounce the two exactly the same. And so I thought that it would be, you know, clever to uh, name this series a bit of a play on words. And I don't know if in this case, clever is synonymous with confusing, but it's my series, so you can deal with it. Today is a beautiful uh, and rapidly warming one in the uh, New Mexican desert. Ah, and there's the wind that waited until I started talking to start blowing. This morning I am setting my sights on the mesa, which you can't see, to my left and your right. Standing at 200 feet, this mesa is home to one of the most important and lesser known ruins in the American Southwest. A site which today we refer to as the Guadalupe Ruins. I did a little poking around there last night, uh, and it's really beautiful. I have never been more excited to film at a location. And the cow is walking towards me slowly. Obviously filming at places like Karahan Tepe and Gobekli Tepe were incredibly special, but there's something about the remoteness of this place that really speaks to me. I haven't seen another person since I turned down this road about 18 hours ago, and so I really mean when I say that this is uh, about as remote as you can get. I've seen a couple ranches and stuff around, but most of them seem to be completely unoccupied, so for all intents and purposes, I guess I'm out here by myself. Yeah, moo, I know. Mm. I come in peace. If you were a burger, then it would be a different story. But you're not a burger yet, and I respect you for that. So I think that the plan right now is I'm gonna finish breaking camp, um, just so I can have most of my stuff ready to go by the time I'm done filming. Because uh, I'm not really sure how long this will take me, and I know I'll probably want to get on the road by the time I'm done with it. Um, so I'm going to finish breaking down the tent, uh, maybe pack some of the gear up onto the bike, move the bike down onto flat terrain to pack it. Because after my mishaps over the last two days with the weight distribution on this thing, I'm not taking any unnecessary risks. Um, but then I think we're going to do a preliminary walk up there where I am going to uh, fly the drone a little bit. Um, and yeah. So, let's see how it goes. Just wrapped up filming. <laughs> Crack of two o'clock. Uh, these things always just take longer than you expect. Rule of thumb. Still gotta do a little outro for that video, but right now I'm uh, setting my sights on packing up the bike and getting ready to make tracks because I am sick of being here. However, we have had some uh, pretty exciting developments for a place like this within the last couple hours. I have seen not one, but two trucks both of which were about an hour apart from one another, which leads me to uh, begin to doubt my uh, original hypothesis, which is that I'm the only person left on Earth. At the top of the mesa, I saw some real-life cowboys cowboying it up down in the valley. 
But on the bright side of being here for such a long time, all the equipment that I plugged in is now fully charged. So the drone is fully charged, the flashlight is fully charged, and I had something else plugged into it too that is probably also fully charged. So I'm gonna just take a few minutes here, get everything all situated, and uh, then we're gonna chart our heading. This is the fun part, taking a heavy ass bike down a sketchy ass hill and trying not to die while doing it. You know, most days a hill like that would be a fucking cakewalk. But this bike is so heavy, and after the falls yesterday, I'm not taking any chances. So I'm doing it with only like half the gear on it. Uh, hope I don't get stuck out here. I only got two liters of water left. Ah, uh, hot water. Like a fucking charm, baby. Every time, let's go. How fucked is this? It's pretty packed. Okay, should be good. There we go. Do I install that shit eventually? What's up, bitch? All right, so that's gonna probably do it for this site. Just need to put some last stuff on the bike, but I wanted to have a look at the map so we can actually see where we're going. Welcome to Milo's insane way of traveling. Why use Google Maps when you can use paper maps? When I did my first cross-country motorcycle trip with my dad when I was 13, I mapped out uh, everything in the exact same way. I did it all on a paper map and I still have all of them. And uh, you know, I just enjoyed it so much that why should I stop there? I'm gonna just keep doing it. We are currently here at the Guadalupe ruins, which is labeled as a ghost town for some reason. Um, and I wanna press south to the Acoma Pueblo Sky City next. Um, there is a road that runs through here that is not marked on this map, but it does exist because I am currently on it. So if it didn't exist, something would be really wrong. So we're gonna just follow that. I think that's probably like 50 miles. I should have plenty of gas. I didn't lose too much when I fucking fell over and started leaking fuel everywhere yesterday. Probably stop somewhere along I-40 to get uh, food and a beer because God damn it, I've earned it. For a little bit of context here at the beginning of this trip, um, this may be day two of uh, Dark Roots, uh, but this is day 10 of me traveling cross country. I just went all the way uh, from the East Coast to uh, Albuquerque uh, with my partner and one of my friends uh, over the course of like eight or nine days. So, you know, for most people that would be like, oh, that was my summer road trip. That was the most exhausting thing I've ever done in my life. And then here's my dumbass being like, oh yeah, honey, why don't we just travel cross country together? You drop me off in Albuquerque and Albuquerque, and then I'm gonna get on my bike and I'm gonna just go fuck off into the desert for a little while. Uh, and so I'm already here with 10 days of travel under my belt and my God, is it showing. I think we're gonna get into a good swing of things. I'm just trying not to rush through it and, um, I'm gonna saddle the wagons and I will see you where the road takes me. Go on, tumble, tumbleweed. Wow, now that I start filming, you stop. A whopping 0.3 miles from where we left and there's another canyon. Now I faced two canyons yesterday, the first of which, or I guess the second of which was fine. It was something kind of gradual and you could just cross it at the bottom. There was a pipe where the water was flowing but the first one was terrible, and I wiped the fuck out really hard. So, we're gonna check this one and see what it's like. Oh, that's no problem. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, that's dry as all hell. Okay, no problem. Let's finish this. Our situation has not improved. This is the road I need to be on, which is 279 and it comes to a fucking gate. I can't go back because there's literally a river that I can't cross and I don't really see another fucking option. I don't want my only option to be going through here and trying not to get shot, 
but I really am not sure what else to do right now because I don't even know if I have enough gas to go all the way back that way. Fuck. Just not really sure what to do here. I got like a liter and a half of water. I've seen two people today and I'm behind this fucking gate. My only reason that I'm hesitant about going through it other than not wanting to get my ass fucking shot is if there's a gate on the other side that's locked. This one's unlocked. And if I make it to the other side and that one's locked, then I'm gonna have a fucking problem. God, that is a decision I don't wanna have to make. Guess I don't really have a lot of fucking choices. Well, if I do this, I'm not filming it. Plausible deniability. Uh, if I make it through and you see me on the other side, I found an alternative route. All right, the situation has again gotten a little bit worse. So I came down this road, went down there, down a little turn, because I was like, this isn't the road I'm supposed to be on. Turns out this is the road I'm supposed to be on. So I think right now, god damn it, this is a fucking nightmare. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go to the ranch that was right near the uh, ruin. See if I can get a little more fuel and maybe a spot back up the part of the road where I fucking wiped out yesterday. <sighs> uh, all part of the journey, you know? Okay, so, another change of plan. Came by the ranch where I saw the two riders leave from this morning. Horse trailer still there, so I know people live here, probably just some of people riding the road. There's nobody there. And I'm losing my light, and frankly, I'm kind of pissed and sick of being stuck out here. So, I don't know if it's stupid or bold, but I'm gonna just try and get the fuck back out the way I came in. I know I have enough fuel to at least get back to the uh, pave, and probably enough to get to the gas station, knock on wood. But in order to do that, it means I have to cross the thing that almost fucking killed me yesterday. Which hopefully it'll be more dry than it was, but Jesus fuck. Alright Milo, you wanted your rite of passage, how's this for a rite of passage? Jesus. Everyone take a good long look at the son of a bitch that almost killed me. If I'm going down there to inspect that, I'm bringing my water. Now to say that I want to do this would be wrong, because I don't. I don't want to do this, not at all. But to say that it's kind of my only option right now, absolutely. Not to be like, over dramatic, but I have a liter and a half of water, and I'm in the middle of the fucking desert with like, maybe a fifth of a tank of fuel. <laughs> so, I think it would probably be a good idea for me to just try and make this happen. Oh, a couple trucks have come through here and actually made this a tiny bit better. <sighs> All right, let me show you what we're dealing with. Welcome to the canyon that I have unofficially dubbed, uh, I hate this place, never come here ever, 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 don't do it, ever. The middle of I hate this place, don't ever come here ever, ever, ever canyon is a, a road for some goddamn reason. Couldn't really figure out why. All the other ones seem to be pretty well put together, but this one I must have collapsed or something. There's a ruined bridge piece uh, down here. Ooh, I think that might be me. Was that me? Sure was, look at that. So yeah, there was a bridge here, apparently, at one point, and it probably went up to that, but it collapsed, and then, and then since I guess this isn't a throughway, they were like, fuck it, let's just not rebuild the bridge. And we'll warn people, it'll be like a goddamn horror movie. I feel like I, I'm in fucking, what's that? Cabin in the woods. What happened yesterday that made this so tricky is the day before yesterday, it had rained. And so all of this was clay. So I came down here, it was all going well. I tried to make this little bridge of rocks. I think the rocks may have slipped out. Uh, and then I, oh, I think you can actually see my route. Look at that right through the mud in the middle and off the berm to the side and crashed somewhere up there. Now, in anticipation of this goddamn thing coming up, you know, at about five miles down the road, I've been thinking about how I'm gonna get across it. So, the obvious one, option A, be a hero, plot a course, come down here, keep it steady going down, and then full bore up the other side so you don't lose grip of the handlebars. Option B, Strip all of the gear off the bike, and then proceed with option A, so the bike is lighter. And then at the very least, if it does fall, I can pick it back up again, because that was the problem yesterday. It was off to the side with the wheels, like, going up the reverse side of the canyon, so I couldn't lift it, so I had to drag the bike, like, a good foot out from the wall in order to lift it back up. After stripping all the gear off and fucking half gallon of oil leaking out, or fuel leaking out. So that's option B. Option C, which I just thought of, is probably the best option. 
and that is to ride the bike very carefully down here, stop probably around here, and then walk the bike in first gear across, Just pause on the other side, and that hill is fucking child's play, I can handle that. Now, I tried to take the left line yesterday, and that was a mistake. So today, I think I'm gonna try and take the right line, which looks a little bit better. Ooh, actually, if I'm gonna be walking the bike, I need to make sure I can actually walk here. This mud, do not underestimate this mud. Okay. Okay, we're good, it's starting to crack, so this shit's starting to dry out. It is four o'clock, I have very little fuel, and neither of my legs have broken yet, and I've fallen twice. <laughs> both in the same way, it's both because of this fucking clay, I'm not used to this shit. I swear I am a good motorcycle rider, I've been riding since I was like, 18, I got my license, I got my motorcycle license before I got my car license, I know how to do this shit, but this terrain is just ridiculous. For anyone who rides and you've slid in clay, you know what it's like, you literally, doesn't matter how good you are, if you hit clay going, wet clay going like 25, 30 miles an hour, you're fucked. Ah, there's a little birdie in my head saying that this is going to be okay. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. All those shots that you see in like, you know, vlogs and travel things, they require so much setup. So like, you know, I could go to the top of the hill and get all these clips of me setting up the bike and getting ready to come down here and then walk to the bottom of the hill again, place my camera and then actually ride down. But because I'm an actual living person and the sun is an actual factor in my timeline here, uh, I am going to set up my camera on this berm over here and I'm going to ride down. Gianfranco. Enjoy the rest of this profoundly long clip of me getting ready. Okay. Part one, success. Part two. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Even that part was a little more scary than I thought it was gonna be. There was a big patch of sand there that I just didn't notice. <laughs> and I went through that braking. Which, motorcycle rule number one they teach you in rider's course is if you're starting to lose control, do not brake. You will eat shit and die. Let's fucking go! Ugh. Fuck! Fuck you! Fuck you! You put the fear of God in me. Nobody does that. You fucking dickhead. If you're watching any travel documentation and the people in it aren't swearing, either they're lying to you or they're not doing anything nearly cool enough. You know, Guadalupe was one of the coolest archaeological sites I've ever seen. Really just a pristine, remote paradise. But what I can tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, is unless someone offers to charter me there on a helicopter, I am never, ever doing that again. And here I was being like, oh yeah, you can make it to the Acoma Pueblo tonight. Camp somewhere nearby, maybe we'll be ready by the morning. I have to go all the fucking way around this Whatever the fuck this place is. That means I have to go back to goddamn Albuquerque. Son of a bitch. How the fuck, I haven't even got out of here. I should be pitching camp in like an hour. Okay, I'm overloading myself. We're gonna just get out of here and uh, we'll figure this out from there. We're gonna be fine, that was the fucking hard part. That was as long as I don't just tip over trying to go up this fucking road, I'm okay. Wow, I swear a lot more when I'm Fucking fired up. Fuck. God. Sorry. I, this is how I roll, baby. Animal print pants out of control. Now that that uh, stupid, dumb, awful, terrible thing is out of the way, um, I'm gonna go back. I think it's about 25, maybe 30 miles till, till civilization. And I will catch up with you there. 
because I don't want to have to stop to film anything along the way because I'm so profoundly done with this place. I don't want to be here anymore. So we're gonna go and we're not gonna look back. And then when we're done, when we're there, I'll talk to you and we'll say, hey, hey, what's going on? See you down the road. Ugh, fuck that. I just pulled over here and I've been watching the cars go through the intersection for the last like three minutes. Look, here's one now. Probably shouldn't look like I'm on the verge of fucking death. I mean when I say that doing motorcycle travel is one of my favorite things ever. And I will do it until I'm pushing up daisies. But as much as I love a good back road and dirt in every direction, I do not like when you are one fall away from being on I Survived. 48 hours into this bullshit. Fuck me. I like broke a nail. Fuck that. I'm gonna go eat a burger just to spite you. So I'm not quite as worried about fuel anymore. Uh, now that I'm back to asphalt, I haven't even gone onto reserve yet. So, if for some reason I do run out, there's people here who can help, so I'm not too concerned. So now I'm gonna ride back, I think it's like probably 25 miles, my fucking pants are falling off. I think it's probably 25 miles back to the gas station I passed on the way here. You know, when I, uh, passed that gas station for the first time, I was like, oh, you should probably stop there and get some gas. I know you got this nice new big tank, but it can't hurt to have a little extra gas. And then I just rode past it. And then like a mile down the road, I stopped. I pulled over to the side of a fucking highway and was like, Milo, you should probably go back and get gas. It'll be easier to do it then. And then I was like, nah, it'll be another one. So I went the rest of like the 15 miles to the place where this road that I just came to meets the main road. And then I pulled off and I was like, huh, there wasn't a gas station. You should probably check and see where the next gas station is. And there isn't any. So here's my dumb ass with uh, like, I don't even know how much fuel is left in that tank, but not enough. Lesson learned. If you pass a gas station and it's been more than like two hours since you filled up, fill up again. Worst case scenario, you just have more gas. Fuck. Y'all, that was tough. I've, I've, I've done solos before. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. That was, that was emotionally draining for the last 48 hours. I really thought I was going to be in fucking trouble out there. All right, um, gas station, drink. Oh, I could crush an Arizona iced tea right now. Oh my God. Oh, that is the only thing motivating me to keep going. Some YouTubers live lavish lifestyles in penthouse apartments and Beverly Hills mansions. Me? I'm eating beef jerky next to a dumpster. That's fucking good. Okay, so the plan. Uh, I just chilled in this parking lot for a bit, had a little food, or at least just something. It wasn't really a meal by any sense of the word but unfortunately I have to backtrack all the way to Albuquerque which sucks but it's like seven o'clock now and I'm definitely not getting a camp pitched and so tonight is gonna be the first hotel night and now normally I wouldn't do a hotel night on the second day of a trip but this isn't the second day of a trip this is the tenth day of this trip for me it's just the second day I've been on the motorcycle but I could use a fucking bath and a warm bed and Wi-Fi that was really bad so we're gonna head there and we're gonna maybe have a real dinner could be nice yeah i guess that's it i put fucking five gallons of fuel in the tank which is great because i'm absolutely loaded but it also means that the fucking thing weighs like 35 pounds more or something so i'll have to be careful all right it seems like the truck parade is starting so i'm out of here we'll see you in albuquerque smelling gas on the way over here. I don't know if it's 
my tank or if there's a leak or something, but I can't smell it now. And my bike isn't on fire and hasn't exploded, so I think it's safe to say that we're probably good for now. Okay. I'm a professional. Dude, I am so fucking exhausted. All right, I'm gonna go take some shots outside. Take some shots, I wish I could take some shots right now. Are you kidding me? The uh, dude at the front desk is a homie and said I could park the bike on the sidewalk if I needed to. Um, but I got a first floor room just so I can kind of keep an eye on it. So I'm gonna bring her over there now. Oh God, I'm so tired. I have a lot I need to do. Gotta use this Wi-Fi well. Fuck. All right, let's move the bike. Oh my God. I am sore, exhausted, hungry, slightly hallucinating looking at this rug. This rug is like a goddamn optical illusion. It's 9.15. Well, I guess I have to find somewhere that's open. That's priority number one because those places will close and if I don't eat, there, then I'm just kind of shit out of luck, so. But we're good, we made it out. We made it out of the hell hole and we are safe and sound in a hotel. Uh, we're really roughing it out here tonight, boys. Filberto's was recommended to me. And it's open till 10.30, so if I go over there, I think that's gonna be the move. I could absolutely fucking demolish a burrito right now. Pete Milo trivia, one of my, you know, the food pyramid, the food thing with like the food on it. Um, my entire food pyramid is burrito. Love those things. I don't even have like words right now. I'm just so, I need a burrito and a beer. I'm gonna stop talking to a camera like it's a person. Is there a cricket in here? That's way too loud to not be in here. No, it's outside. Ask for a new room. It's too close to the cricket. Today is just really not my day. I walked over to the Mexican place that was said it was open till 10.30. I got there at 9.20 and it was closed. So I walked to another Mexican place a little ways down the road. They said it was open till 10. I got there at 9.30 and that one was also closed. And so I ended up walking for two miles down this terrible urban sprawl hellscape of a three lane on each side strode with traffic moving at the speed of fucking sound in order to get myself to one of the only places that is actually fucking open, a McDonald's. Do I want to be eating McDonald's right now? No. Do I want to be eating right now? More than anything else in the fucking world. Today my diet has consisted of a pack of ramen for breakfast, a granola bar of some kind right before leaving to go to a fucking dead end on that terrifying ass road, an ice cream sandwich and a, some beef jerky and a Gatorade in a gas station parking lot. When I say that I wanted like a meal tonight, I mean it. But if this is the best that I can get right now, I am not going to complain for a fucking second because you know what? I could be stuck with my leg broken under a bike in the middle of asshole nowhere and I wouldn't have anything to eat. And you know what? You want to know what makes this even better? Addendum. We got some of that uh, good, good McDonald's Sprite. This one watered down really fast. Shit got flatter than a... than an earth. Can't think of good jokes right now. I'm too tired. But what makes this all the better? beer and so I'm gonna drink this I'm gonna eat those burgers and upload some footage Jean Franco Mylena have fun watching this and uh, that was a very frightening day I am certainly humbled on the first two days of this trip I think a big reason why today was so scary was hitting that dead-end road because 
one of the things that I noticed being out there was how few vehicles there were. And that kind of freaked me out because I was like, there's not a lot of people coming through here. So if something goes wrong, I'm not going to have help immediately. But coming to that dead end was like, I don't know, it was like a terrifying prophecy because a dead end isn't just an inconvenience and meaning you have to go back. It means that there is no through traffic on that road. So the only cars that will ever come down that road are the ones that need to be there, which are the people that live in the very few ranches that are out in that area. So if I went past that fucking gate, that no trespassing gate, which I definitely didn't do, uh, and fell, you're fucked. And so when I was driving back from that gate, I think I felt very trapped because I was stuck between a dead end and terrain which caused me to have the worst fall on a bike that I have ever had. And so that was just, I don't know, that was a pretty scary place to be in. Oh, look at that sunburn on my neck. I'm a, re I'm a real redneck now, Jesus. Okay, I need to remember to put sunscreen behind my ear. Look at that. That's good. I'm gonna be so, look. <laughs> Oh, I need to do better with sunscreen. I did great on my face. I'm, I got that that bronze shit going on and my eyes are so bloodshot. Holy shit. That was a rough day, dude. I'm just really grateful to be out of there. And as shitty as the food situation is, and as shitty as the day was, I got some awesome footage. Got to see a really cool place that I guarantee most people have never and will never fucking see. Uh, just because of how fucking hard it is to get to it. And I'm safe. The bike is okay. I'm okay. I have a warm meal. I have a place to sleep. I got Wi-Fi. I really don't have a lot to complain about right now other than things in retrospect. So I'm going to take it easy for the rest of the night have a drink and a meal, and uh, call it well-deserved. My neck is so red. Can you hear that copyright music? <clears throat> well, folks, I think that's gonna do it for today. It's currently midnight. I've got all my footage uploading. Where is my toothpaste? <sighs> you know, you just can't win sometimes is in the pocket of my pants. Just where every toothpaste belongs. So I think that's gonna do it for us tonight. Do you like my toothbrush? I had to cut the bottom off of it because it didn't fit in my toothbrush bag. I'd like to thank you all for joining me on this fucking insane day. Here's hoping tomorrow is a modicum better. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and I'll see you next time on Dark Roots.